In the evolved world of military technology, speed is the new stealth. Hypersonic missiles, capable of traveling at more than five times the speed of sound, are the latest frontier in the arms race, and the United States has recently developed two new hypersonic missiles, the Mutant Maneuvering Missiles and the Hay WC Hypersonic Missiles. These missiles are not just fast, they are capable of unpredictable flight paths, making them a nightmare for any defense system, and are designed for long-range strikes capable of hitting targets thousands of miles away in a matter of minutes. The million dollar question is why this technology terrifies China. What are the capabilities of these missiles and why does it have world powers on edge? Join us as we explore the scary capabilities of these hypersonic missiles. Unlike traditional warheads, a MARV doesn't just follow a set path. It's capable of maneuvering, changing its trajectory mid-flight. This isn't just a straight line from point A to point B. This ability to change course makes MARVs incredibly difficult to intercept. It's like trying to hit a moving target that can change direction. Why would anyone use a maneuverable re-entry vehicle? Well, there are two major reasons. First, a MARV is a master of disguise. This was a game changer against early anti-ballistic missile systems. These systems took mere seconds to calculate an interception course. This is why they are known as evading MARVs. They're the ultimate stealth weapon slipping past defenses and delivering their payload with deadly accuracy. Now let's talk about the second reason why MARVs are such a game changer. These MARVs use terminal guidance systems that kick in during the final stages of the flight. This class is sometimes known as Accuracy MARVs. They're like heat-seeking missiles, but even more advanced. Take the Pershing-2 active radar homing system, for example. It's the short range of the active guidance system that demands the RV be able to maneuver. And it's not just about hitting stationary targets. These systems can also track moving targets like aircraft carriers. These massive ships can move far enough between launch and approach that there's no way to predict their location. That's where active terminal guidance comes in. During the Cold War era, the Soviet Union unveiled its latest weapon, the A-35 anti-ballistic missile system. It was used as a formidable defense against incoming missiles. Across the globe, world powers noticed, including the United States. They start asking the big question, how can they defeat this new system? It was a challenge that demanded urgent attention and the Tri-Service Advanced Strategic Missile Systems Office proffered a solution, and they were tasked with studying the problem, with finding a way to outsmart the A-35. And guess what? Several solutions were proffered in the race to develop a counter strategy to ensure the balance of power started. One of the cool strategies that was used was to extend the range of re-entry vehicles, or RVs, and make them harder to track. First up, there is the skip glide re-entry. Now this is a super clever technique where the RV is made to skip in and out of the Earth's atmosphere. This has been referenced to be similar to a stone skipping on water. This not only extends the range of the RV, but also keeps it flying at a lower altitude, making it much more difficult to track over long distances. Next, we have air-launched ballistic missiles. These fly much shorter distances and at much lower altitudes compared to their counterparts. This makes them a great option when they want to keep things under the radar, pun intended. But that is not all. Some defense systems use decoys and radar countermeasures to throw off anti-ballistic missile systems. The idea here is to create so much noise that the ABM systems fail to track the actual RV among all the decoys. And last but not least, we have the MIRV systems. MIRV stands for Multiple Independently Targetable Reentry Vehicle. These systems increase the number of targets, overwhelming the ABM system and making it difficult to handle all the incoming threats. Maneuvering RVs, or reentry vehicles, is another piece of the puzzle. They're like the chess grandmasters, and the plan for these was to always take them several moves ahead. Back in the day, Radars and especially computers took many seconds to calculate the trajectory of the descending RV, the trajectory of the ascending ABM, and the chosen collision point. It was a complex dance of numbers and vectors. But what if the RV could change its moves midair? If the RV maneuvered continually during the time it was within range of the ABM, the guidance system would be left playing catch up, never able to calculate a successful interception course. Launching multiple ABMs in a pattern that would cover all potential approaches to the target was the only way out. 
This tactic had a high cost. Each attacking RV may need to have dozens of ABMs. Now when the technology was perfected, the advanced AMARV maneuverable re-entry vehicle was developed. This isn't just any prototype. It's a MARV built by the legendary McDonnell Douglas. Four of these futuristic technologies were made, each one representing a significant leap in re-entry vehicle sophistication, which was like going from a bicycle to a sports car overnight. The AMARV had an entry mass of approximately 470 kilograms, its nose radius a mere 2.34 cents. It boasted a forward frustum half angle of 10.4 degrees, an interfrustum radius of 14.6 centimeters, an aft frustum half angle of 6 degrees, and an axial length of 2.079 meters. In layman's terms, this was one sleek, sophisticated piece of technology. The RV is essentially shaped like a cone, with a slice taken off one side to make a flat surface. We now have a little triangular prism at the far end of this flat space. This prism is divided into left and right halves, which together we refer to as a split windward flap at times. These flaps are essential for managing the movement of the car. When both flaps are raised into the airstream, it causes the nose of the vehicle to move in the opposite direction, producing lift. It's kind of like when you stick your hand out of a moving car and tilt it slightly. Your hand moves up, right? Same principle. And here's the final piece of the puzzle. To rotate the RV, one flap is raised while the other is lowered. It's a delicate dance of aerodynamics that allows for precise control of the vehicle's movement. Now let's talk about the mutant missile that is built on this technology. The Air Force Research Laboratory started a mission to significantly increase missile range and lethality against highly maneuverable targets. But how do they plan to achieve this? It all comes down to a better flight control actuation system, which is like the brain of the missile, which is how the Mutant program works. This isn't your average missile program. Mutant is all about active morphing. It's like a gymnast capable of high rate pivoting of the missile for body. This high rate pivoting is referred to as articulation, which is what makes the missile change direction every chance it gets. Now we're going to unravel the mysteries of missile articulation. So let's dive right in. The articulation control actuation system controls the missile's movement. The system is made up of a composite high-strain skin structure. Think of it as a super flexible and durable skin that wraps around an internal electromagnetic actuation system. This is the heart of the ACAS, controlling the movements of the missile. Here's where it gets really interesting. The missile has a single articulated joint. This is like the elbow or knee of the missile, allowing it to change direction. The forebody of the missile, that's the front part, is used as a flight control surface. It's like the wings of a bird helping to steer the missile in flight. And the result? This design significantly boosts the effectiveness of air-to-air -air symmetric missiles. Now the Air Force Research Laboratory has been hard at work for six whole years investing in research, and their dedication paid off. They now have a thorough understanding of the design, construction, integration, and use of the articulation control actuation system. This isn't just any system. It's impossible to improve missile performance without the ACAS. Now, there's a whole bunch of ideas floating around about how to make missiles bend, but not all of them fly when it comes to the super fast world of supersonic missiles. But there's one approach that's got everyone buzzing. It involves spinning segments that fit together at weird angles. Imagine the nozzle on an F-35 fighter jet, the one that lets it land straight up and down. Yeah, kind of like that, but for a missile. An electronically controlled actuation technology consisting of frameworks, bearings, gears, and small electromagnetic motors was created by AFRL. A circular pass-through for component wiring into the aircraft body is made possible by careful design. The actuation components are shielded in super strong, lightweight skin to protect it. We mentioned how this missile can bend, however. How does this happen? Originally, the flexible outer layer was to be made of a single type of material, similar to an advanced rubber band. However, engineering is all about making things operate flawlessly, and that particular material wasn't cutting it. Therefore, the composite structure was created by the project's geniuses, However, they didn't end with just one concept. They developed three different strategies for creating this composite, 
each with unique advantages. We just covered the United States ACAST tech that lets missiles bend and damage. And now we are going to break down their hypersonic air breathing weapon concept program. The program is a project from the United States Defense Advanced Research Projects Agency, or as we all know it, DARPA. This isn't just any project. It is a scramjet-powered hypersonic air-launched cruise missile project. Yeah, you heard that right. Now get this, they announced a successful hypersonic flight on September 2021. And here is the kicker. This isn't your typical missile. Nope, this one is a kinetic energy weapon. This missile cuts through the air like a superheated bullet, faster than five times the speed of sound. It is powered by a scramjet engine, and the coolest part is that it doesn't even need an explosive warhead. The sheer force of impact at those hypersonic speeds is enough to take down its target. This missile can move at insane hypersonic speeds, as we indicated. But when did this all begin? Unbelievably, it started on September 2021, and the whole wake accomplished its first successful test flight, which is a significant advancement. After that, things started to get somewhat interesting. Mid-March 2022 saw additional testing, but those were kept under wraps. Why? It seems that they didn't want to add to the already tense situation involving Russia and Ukraine. Very reasonable. The good news is that they eventually disclosed this additional test on April 2022, so there are no longer any surprises there. One interesting thing about the missile is that, in comparison to other hypersonic missiles, it is small. This gives it more advantage because it can launch from a large range of planes and other platforms, and it is also easier to equip with targeting devices, which adds to its versatility as a weapon. And it doesn't stop there. Comparable to a stepping stone toward progressively more sophisticated hypersonic technology is HAWC. The people behind this project, DARPA, are already hard at work on the next big thing, which is dubbed Mohawk and sounds incredibly futuristic. We are eager to find out what that one has planned. During its last set of test flights, it flew perfectly, speeding above the speed of sound at an astounding 3,300 miles per hour and it managed to do it all while flying at a mind-blowing altitude of nearly 60,000 feet while covering 300 nautical miles. However, Hawok is still ongoing. In this most recent test, its overall performance greatly improved, making it an even more powerful computer. Lockheed Martin and DARPA, the people behind Hawok, are so enthusiastic about the concept that they are currently working on the next installment. Let's now shift our attention and talk about China. China's answer was, to put it politely, fascinating. China denied carrying out a test and said that it was merely a standard inspection of its aircraft. However, according to other reports, China has successfully tested a new hypersonic missile known as the DF-27. This missile traveled more than 2,000 kilometers in over 12 minutes. What is the true story? The United States and China appear to be creating a hypersonic missile race, and we are here for it. Let's change gears for a while and discuss the Dongfeng missile series. This isn't your average firecracker. We're talking about an entire family of missiles ranging from short range to transcontinental. They are developed by the Chinese military and come in many shapes and sizes and can launch from land and hit with extreme precision. Now the term Dongfeng translates to east wind in Chinese which sounds very poetic, but don't be fooled. Now the Dongfeng-1, also known as the DF-1, is not a fancy hypersonic beast like we talked about earlier. No, the DF-1 was more like the oldest of the Dongfeng missiles, a kind of tribute to the classic Soviet R-2 missile. Think of it like the first car your dad ever owned. Wasn't the flashiest, but it got the job done. That's the DF-1. It wasn't super long range, only reaching about 550 kilometers, and it packed a punch of about 500 kilograms. Now the DF-1 cannot compete with recent technology, but they were built sometime in the 1960s and are now retired and enjoying their golden years in some missile museum somewhere probably. But that doesn't mean it's not important. The DF-1 paved the way for all the amazing missiles China has today. The DF-2 was China's first attempt at a mid-range missile. It had a bit of range of over 1,250 kilometers and the potential to carry a nuclear warhead. Now, the design caused a lot of stir because it looks suspiciously similar to the Soviet R-5 missile, and some have said that China straight up copied the Soviets. 
The first launch of the DF-2 in 1962 wasn't exactly a slam dunk. It went a bit wonky, leading to an improved version called the DF-2A. This variant played a significant role in China's first nuclear bomb test in 1966, and it served China well for a while. However, by the year 1980, technology had advanced and the DF-2 was subsequently phased out of active duty. Nonetheless, it maintains a unique place in Chinese missile history, paving the door for even more powerful missiles in the future. The DF-3, also known as the CSS-2 by NATO, was the next variant, and it was an intermediate-range ballistic missile. Now, it wasn't exactly built from scratch. Think of it like a history project where you borrowed a lot from a friend. In this case, the Soviet R-14 missile was the inspiration, especially the first-stage engine. The missile was originally designed to carry a big old atomic warhead. It could launch over 2,500 kilometers. And speaking of upgrades, the DF-3A came along later with some extra muscle, pushing its range to a whopping 3,000 kilometers, or even 4,000 if it was carrying a lighter load. This version even got exported to Saudi Arabia, but with a conventional warhead instead of the nuclear kind. Now, all this was pretty impressive back in the day, but technology marches on. By the mid-2010, the DF-3 and its A model were out and were replaced by the even more powerful DF-21. After a long list of variants, the DF-21, a true game changer in China's missile arsenal, was developed. This variant could carry a single nuclear warhead with a punch of 500 kilotons. And let's not forget the impressive range. We're talking 2,500 kilometers, which puts a lot of targets within reach. The DF-21 wasn't a one-trick pony. It paved the way for the JL-1 submarine missile, which is an underwater version. We are not sure exactly how many DF-21 and A models are still around, but estimates suggest there could be even more now than back in 2010. There's a lot of speculation about the DF-21D. Some say it was tested in the mid-2000 and uses fancy technology to track its targets. And even though the DF-21 family might not be the newest kid on the block anymore, it left its mark on China's missile development. Moving on to the DF-26, specifically the DF-26C. This one's a bit of a mystery machine, but here's what we know and what we don't. First, the good stuff, range. We're talking at least 5,000 kilometers, which is enough to put some serious targets within reach, including United States bases in Guam. Now, the mysterious part, Details are scarce, but here's what we think. Solid fuel, mobile launch vehicles, and the ability to launch from underground bunkers on short notice. That makes it a real headache for anyone trying to track or counter it. Some say that it might represent an improvement over China's previous missile, the DF-21. What does it carry though? That is up to speculation. Nuclear and conventional warheads, as well as possibly cutting edge new technology like anti-ship or hypersonic glide vehicles, might be used. Here's the thing. One of the reasons the DF-26C is so intriguing is that it is somewhat secretive. It demonstrates China's growing missile might and begs the question of what additional tricks they have in store, as well as whether or not this is a reaction to American missiles. Thanks for watching. While you are still here, click on the link on your screen to check out another of our videos. See you there.